friends in this video we will be learning about temperature measurement using thermocouple before going to the hardware connection first let us see the some basics of thermocouple in this presentation you will learning about what is a thermocouple what is the principle of working of thermocouple what are the laws of thermocouple circuit what are the types of thermocouples what is a single conditioning circuit and finally you will learn about connecting the thermocouple to the signal conditioning circuit and getting the results in the PC using LabVIEW software. What is a thermocouple? A thermocouple is a temperature measuring device consisting of two dissimilar conductors that is metals that contact each other at one or more spots. What is this? This is a metal A this is metal B which are connected at this junction and this junction this junction is known as measurement junction and this junction is known as reference junction the MF developed E is given by A1 T plus A2 T square plus A3 T square where A1, A2, A3 are constant depending upon the metals A and B and T is the temperature difference between the measuring junction and the reference junction. What is the principle of working? Here we have two metals connected at this junction and this junction. As I have told that this junction is known as measuring junction. Here we provide a heat source for the measure for uh, at the measuring junction. Now the MF developed is recorded by using the voltmeter now let's see the principle of working uh, the principle of working is given by three effects seaback effect peltier effect thomson effect seaback effect what is seaback effect when two dissimilar metals are joined together an emf exists between the two points that is the function of junction temperature now what is the Peltier effect? If two metals are connected to an external circuit in such a way that current is drawn then EMF is slightly altered. What is Thomson effect? If a temperature gradient exists along either or both of the metals the EMF may undergo additional modification. Laws of thermocouple circuit Law of intermediate metals It states that if a third metal is connected to the circuit the net EMF will not be altered as long as junction temperature are same. We have metal A, metal B connected at this point. Now metal C is connected to metal A at this point and it is connected to metal B at this point. So what the law of intermediate metal states that if the junction temperature at T1 and T2 are same then the net EMF as produced by metal A and metal B in contact is same with the metal C in contact. Law of intermediate temperature. It states that if a thermocouple produces EMF E1 when its junction are at temperatures T1 and T2 and EMF E2 at temperatures T2 and T3 then thermocouple will produce an EMF of E1 plus E2 if the junction temperatures are at T1 and T2. Let us see what this means. I have a thermocouple where the junction temperatures are at T1 and T2. This produces an EMF E1. Now if the temperature is at T2 and T3 then it produces an EMF of E2. Now if I have a EM, uh, thermocouple with temperature T1 at a measurement junction and T3 at reference junction then the EMF produced will be E1 plus E2. Uh, these are the types of thermocouple type K the positive lead of thermocouple of type K is made by chromel the negative lead is made by alumel the application is from minus 200 degree celsius to 1300 degree celsius the voltage swing in millivolts is 56 now the positive wire connecting the positive lead uh, is iron metal 
and the negative wire connected to the negative lead is copper nickel material type T the positive lead is made by copper the negative is made by constatin application is from minus 200 degree Celsius to 350 degree Celsius voltaging is 26 millivolts positive wire is made by copper negative wire is made by constatin type J positive lead is iron negative lead is constatin application is minus 150 degree Celsius to 1000 degree Celsius voltaging is 50 millivolts positive wire is made by iron negative wire is made by constatin type S yes. it is made by platinum and 10 percent rhodium this means that 90 percent of material used is platinum and 10 percent is rhodium negative lead is made by platinum application is 0 to 1538 degree Celsius voltage swing is 16 millivolts positive wire is made by copper negative wire is made by copper nickel type R here platinum is used is 87 percent and rhodium used is 13 percent platinum negative is made by negative lead is made by platinum application is 0 to 1593 degree Celsius voltage swing is 18.7 millivolts positive wire is copper negative wire is copper nickel type B here platinum is 70 percent rhodium is 30 percent negative lead is made by platinum application is 38 degree Celsius to 1800 degree Celsius voltage swing in millivolts is 13.6 millivolts positive wire is copper negative wire is copper nickel type E here positive lead is made by chromel negative lead is made by constatin application is 0 to 982 degree Celsius voltage swing in millivolts is 75 positive wire is iron negative wire is constatin Now let us see why do we need signal conditioning circuit for a thermocouple. We need it for th four purposes cold junction compensation, amplification, isolation, interface. Now what is cold junction compensation? Here we have seen that this is the measuring junction or hot junction and this is the reference junction or cold junction. Now when we are measuring the hot junction by using a heat source the temperature of reference junction may also vary that is at each instant of measuring jun hot junction temperature the reference junction is different so the difference between the measure and the reference junction varies so we don't get a proper EMF so we need to keep this reference junction constant this can be done by placing this reference junction in a cold water bath but this is not the uh, method carried out so we go for a cold junction compensation in cold junction compensation if the reference junction temperature varies then the additional emf produced is compensated by using the signal conditioning circuit why do we need amplification we need amplification because the voltage produced by thermocouple is in microvolts so to detect we need amplification isolation if we are you connecting the signal conditioning circuit uh, thermocouple for a measurement we need isolation interface we can connect it directly to the data equation devices so we use an IC for signal conditioning circuit known as AD849X. The pin details are the first pin is a negative input, second pin negative input of the thermocouple, second pin is reference. This pin must be driven by low impedance. 
third is negative supply you need to provide negative supply fourth is not connected fifth is sense pin this sense pin is used in order so that your output voltage varies between plus vs and minus vs if it reaches the sense voltage we need to provide some voltage at this pin 6 is the output 7 is positive supply 8 is positive input of the thermocouple this is the circuit diagram of signal conditioning circuit we have a thermocouple connected here the negative of the thermo this is the positive and this is the negative the negative of thermocouple is grounded through a 1 mega ohm resistor this is give uh, the input is first filtered using low pass filter and then supplied to the IC. This resistor values should be less than 50k and these capacitor values are 0.1 microfarad. Now this is positive supply given to the positive input of the IC AD849X and this is given to the negative input of the IC. Here the supply is given to the IC through coupling capacitors. These are 0.1 microfarad capacitors. This is negative supply given through coupling capacitor. The sense and output voltage are shorted. Now to measure the output voltage of the signal conditioning circuit we need data acquisition device NIMIDEC. In May experiment I am using NIMIDAC. Now what is this NIMIDAC? NIMIDAC is a low cost portable data acquisition device that uses NI LabVIEW based software instruments allowing students to measure and analyze real world signals. Now if we have to measure the temperature through signal conditioning device we are using NIMIDAC and interface it with the LabVIEW software to display the temperature and the voltage. So these are the pro properties of NMADX. It provides analog input, analog output, digital input and output, audio, power supplies and digital multimeter functions using a compact USB device. This is the basic block diagram. We are connecting a thermocouple. I will be showing it in the hardware. This is the signal conditioning device circuit. It has five terminals output ground plus five volt and the ground the output I'll be connecting it to the AI zero plus of the NIMIDAC the ground I'll be connecting it to the AI zero minus of the NIMIDAC AI zero minus and AI ground are shorted five voltage supply is taken from NIMIDAC and it is grounded to the digital ground this is interfaced to the laptop through USB cable and in laptop through LabVIEW programming you can display the temperature of the thermocouple. Thank you.